Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing who was David besides being king. When we hear of David, what automatically comes to mind is usually royalty or the beloved king of Israel. But who was David apart from the glory of the throne? And who was this young man that won so many hearts even before he stepped into the palace? What were his skills, approach to life, and what type of personality did he really have? Here are a few of those traits that the famous king called David had despite his crown. Number 1. David was a great shepherd. 1 Samuel chapter 17 AMP says, Now David was the son of the Ephratite of Bethlehem in Judah, named Jesse, who had eight sons. Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in years among men. His three older sons had followed Saul into battle. The names of these three sons who went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next Abinadab, and third Shammah. David was the youngest. Now the three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock at Bethlehem. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with a keeper, picked up the provisions, and went just as Jesse had directed him and he came to the encampment as the army was going out in battle formation, shouting the battle cry. But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep, when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after it and attacked it and rescued the lamb from its mouth, and when it rose up against me, I seized it by its whiskers and struck and killed it. Number 2. David was a talented singer and instrumentalist. 1 Samuel 16, 11-23 AMP says, Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? Jesse replied, There is still one left, the youngest. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send word and bring him, because we will not sit down to eat the sacrificial meal until he comes here. So Jesse sent word and brought him in. Now he had a ruddy complexion with beautiful eyes and a handsome appearance. The Lord said to Samuel, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and terrified him. Saul's servants said to him, Behold, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are here before you to find a man who plays skillfully on the harp. And when the evil spirit from God is in you, he shall play the harp with his hand, and you will be well. So Saul told his servants, Find me a man who plays well and bring him to me. One of the young men said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who was a skilled musician, a brave and competent man, a warrior, discerning, prudent, eloquent in speech, and a handsome man, and the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David your son who is with the flock. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a jug of wine and a young goat, and sent them to Saul with David his son. Then David came to Saul and attended him. Saul loved him greatly, and later David became his armor-bearer. Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Please let David be my attendant, for he has found favor in my sight. So it came about that whenever the evil spirit from God was on Saul, David took a harp and played it with his hand, so Saul would be refreshed and be well, and the evil spirit would leave him. Number 3. David was a skilled warrior. 1 Samuel 17, 20 through 51 AMP. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with a keeper, picked up the provisions, and went just as Jesse had directed him. And he came to the encampment as the army was going out in battle formation, shouting the battle cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up in battle formation, army against army. Then David left his provisions in the care of the supply keeper and ran to the ranks and came and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistines and he spoke these same words again. And David heard him. When the men of Israel all saw the man, they fled from him 
and were very frightened. The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he is coming to defy Israel. The king will reward the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter in marriage and will make his father's house, family, free from taxes and service in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him. What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes the disgrace of his taunting from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God? The men told him, That is what will be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard what he had said to the men. And Eliab's anger burned against David, and he said, Why have you come down here? With whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption, overconfidence, and the evil of your heart, for you have come down in order to see the battle. But David said, What have I done now? Was it not just a harmless question? Then David turned away from Eliab to someone else and asked the same question, and the people gave him the same answer as the first time. When the words that David spoke were heard, the men reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no man's courage fail because of him, Goliath. Your servant will go out and fight with this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight him, for you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep, when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and attacked it, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it by its whiskers and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of mail armor on him. Then David fastened his sword over his armor and tried to walk, but he could not, because he was not used to them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, because I am not used to them. So David took them off. Then he took his shepherd's staff in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones out of the stream bed and put them in his shepherd's bag which he had had, that is, in his shepherd's pouch. With his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. The Philistine came and approached David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked around and saw David, he derided and disparaged him because he was just a young man with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with shepherd's staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will hand you over to us. When the Philistine rose and came forward to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and slung it, and it struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in David's hand. So he ran and stood over the Philistine, grabbed his sword, and drew it out of its sheath and killed him, and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that this mighty champion was dead, they fled. His skills in fighting brought him to prominence in Israel. Everyone sang his praises and even valued him more than King Saul. 
This eventually became the genesis of the hatred King Saul had for David. 1 Samuel 18, 6 through 9 AMP says, As they were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tambourines, songs of joy, and musical instruments. The women sang as they played and danced, and sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Then Saul became very angry, for this saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? Saul looked at David with suspicion and jealousy from that day forward. Number 4. David was a loyal friend to those he loved. 1 Samuel 18, 2 and 5 AMP says, Saul took David that day and did not let him return to his father's house. So David went out wherever Saul sent him, and he acted wisely and prospered. And Saul appointed him over the men of war, and it pleased all the people and also Saul's servants. He never did anything negative against the king or his family. He remained loyal to King Saul's lineage even after he died. Number 5. David was a natural leader. First, he learned his craft by leading sheep and flocks. Then he graduated to leading his own team, then the army of Israel, then became king over the house of Judah, and ultimately the nation of Israel as their king. 2 Samuel 5, 1-5 AMP says, Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you who led Israel out to war and brought Israel in from battle. And the Lord told you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over them. So all the elders, tribal leaders of Israel, came to the king at Hebron. And King David was made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed him king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. Also, 1 Chronicles 11, 10 through 15 AMP says, Now these are the chiefs of David's mighty men who strongly supported him in his kingdom, together with all Israel, to make him king in accordance with the word of the Lord concerning Israel. This is the list of David's mighty men. Jashobim, the son of Hakmonite, the chief of the thirty heroes. He lifted up his spear against three hundred, whom he killed at one time. Next to him in rank was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahoite, who was one of three mighty men. He was with David at Pastamum, where David killed Goliath and where the Philistines were gathered together for battle. There was a plot of ground full of barley, and the people of Israel fled before the Philistines. But they took their stand in the midst of that plot and defended it, and killed the Philistines. And the Lord rescued them by a great victory. Three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock to David, in the cave of Adullam, while the army of the Philistines was camped in the valley of Rephaim. Number 6. David was a skilled writer. David wrote many part of the book of Psalm, amongst which is Psalms 3, 1 through 8 AMP, which he wrote in a time of distress. It says, O Lord, how my enemies have increased! Many are rising up against me. Many are saying of me, There is no help, no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and my honor, and the one who lifts my head. With my voice I was crying to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain, Salah. I lay down and slept safely. I awakened, for the Lord sustains me. I will not be intimidated or afraid of the ten thousands who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheek. You have shattered the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be upon your people. Let us pray. My King, my Lord, thank you for showing me the man David was apart from the throne. I ask in the name of Jesus that you keep building me too, and that apart from my career or work, I will have a full and robust personality that is complete in you. Amen.